This week on Sail Away, Caribbean life on a 30-year-old cat is kind of like the weather in Grenada. Some days it's so rainy you can't even see past it. Other days are so beautiful you don't even remember the rain. After a trying year that was almost too much for us, a lot of lingering problems remain, including our onboard generator, which has demanded most of my attention. I've been on both sides. We've been on the side where there's a boat with a generator and it's super annoying. And obviously now we are the boat with the super loud, annoying generator. But even with some large problems, like a dead motor still unaddressed, that doesn't mean the rest of the list can come to a screeching halt. And we even get lucky and solve a nine-month-old mystery. And there's the through hull, wide open. There's nothing on it, there's no valve, nothing. But exactly as we'd planned, hoped, and struggled for, finally reaching our safe haven in Grenada has brought some much-needed balance to our crazy boat life. Something that earlier in the year seemed almost impossible. Through, uh, soccer parents. Soccer parents! <laughs> so while we show you the things we're working on and talk about the stuff we haven't even touched yet... You know, as soon as we had the one motor die on us, yeah, there's some people that think we should just drop everything and then devote 100% of our energy toward that motor and nothing else and don't do anything till that motor's running. This kind of boat life and project is just not linear like that. Our to-do list isn't going anywhere and we'll keep working our way through it. <laughs> and while we do, we'll show you some of the reasons why we fought and sailed so hard 2,000 plus miles to get to this place and what it's meant to our overall state of mind. <laughs> Ultimately, it's not just about working hard towards the good life. It's about living it at the same time. Ever wish you could escape normal life and experience more of the world? So meet me on that island. Well, we did just that. We sold everything we owned on dry land and sailed away. Hey, promise me that we'll sail away. Now we are roaming the planet in search of new adventures and sharing it with you every week. Just promise me that I sail away. So hit subscribe and escape normal with us. And I'll be yours forevermore. Come on, it's just that little button down there. That's it. Alright, I'm almost, well I guess I'm not really almost done, but I'm finishing number three of all these faucets. We had trouble initially because we couldn't figure out how to adapt the threads that are under here. And this turned out to be the solution, a little quarter turn valve. These are our supply lines and they've just got, it's like a PEX tubing with a fitting clamped into it. it turns out that these thread perfectly onto this so that we've got them on off, which is pretty handy also. I just turned the water back on after hooking up these valves. They are nice and dry. And this is one of those jobs that's just a good example of you know, why things on a boat, especially an older boat, just turn into much more complicated projects than in a house. You know, swapping out a faucet in a house, not a big deal most of the time. What happens on these forward heads, the fact that the drain is super close to the hull, I mean, it's only, you know, like a one foot shot to the hull. So if those are left open and you go on a rougher passage, it shoots water up out of the sink and sprays everything in the bathroom. Previous owner either didn't figure that out or didn't care. I don't know, but I mean, it destroyed. It destroyed, that, that's where so much of the wetness and saltiness and decay has come from in these bathrooms. This is one of those things that we we bought, you know, on Amazon while we were in Charleston. It makes a huge difference. It's these little things that like, they don't cost much and they don't really take that much time. I'm gonna wind up taking maybe an hour to do this. You know, the difference they make in, in how nice and comfortable and homey the boat feels, to me, it's a big deal. Rusty ass sinks with chips falling off them and rust flake in and they don't flow right it just doesn't it's not pleasant slowly but surely we are making the nicer details outweigh the not nice details and the boat's starting to feel much better all right i'm gonna get back to work 
next is cleaning that up and making this whole thing fit nicely. We are all finished. Look at that. Good flow right there. You know, as soon as we had the one motor die on us, yeah, there's some people that think we should just drop everything and then devote 100% of our energy toward that motor and nothing else and don't do anything until that motor's running. This kind of boat life and project is just not linear like that. We have a good motor. And, you know, both those motors are tools to help get the boat someplace when we can't sail. Luckily, we can sail very well on this boat. You know, we're not going to drop everything else when there's so many things on our list to simply make this boat a nice place to live. And this is kind of one of those items. They're not huge items, and that's another reason why sometimes I wind up doing things that some people might think of as frivolous. I, I don't. But they only take a couple hours and they make a huge impact on how much we enjoy being here on this boat. And if we enjoy being on the boat and we're proud of it and we're happy to be here, we're much more likely to really dig into some of the bigger tasks that need handled like the motor. So everything in due time, we will get that motor straightened out one way or the other, but the projects are going to continue throughout. Uh, little and big. It's an item off the list, even though it's a little one. We are in Grenada. We've been here for about a week. Um, kind of definitely started to settle in. And as you can hear, we have our annoying generator still. We've not gotten the northern lights generator fixed we're hoping we've contacted a guy today next week totally he can come out maybe tomorrow if he has time but i just wanted to like put it out there because i know we are that boat in the anchorage and we are obviously have been on both sides we've been on the side where there's a boat with a generator and it's like an outside generator and a loud generator and it's super annoying and obviously now we are the boat with the super loud, annoying generator. And I feel bad, and we definitely had somebody come by and say, you know, <laughs> in no uncertain terms, that they were not real happy with the fact that we are using our generator. And I just want to put it out there that we know, you know, it's obviously not an ideal situation. We wouldn't choose this, this isn't, what we want. I want the Northern Lights to work. I want the, the one that's not loud to work and we are working on that but I can't do anything about that one. You know that one's the one that's saving our lives right now. That's the one that's allowing us to work. So I'm super sorry and I know that it's annoying. There's always another side we're not doing it to annoy the Anchorage. I know it annoys the Anchorage, but we're not doing it to annoy the Anchorage. So here's my apology to all our boat friends and non-boat friends alike. I can't do anything about it. We have to keep our batteries up. We have to be able to work. Hopefully tomorrow the guy will come and it'll be a simple fix, but I don't know, Eric's been working on it non-stop he is doing his best so please just try and be understanding uh i know we try and do that we've there's another boat here with another generator and maybe ours is louder and more annoying though there's absolutely no wind today so maybe it just carries farther and vibrates more this life is so lone wolf like you can go anywhere you can be anything but also it's still a very very close community we are very close you know we're in an anchorage that is full because it's hurricane season in Grenada we just have to be aware of other people and obviously we're trying to be aware of other people we're doing it during the day I think that's better than doing it towards 
later at night, which we were doing for a little bit. I think maybe this five o'clock running of it is better than the eight o'clock. I don't really know. I think maybe there's less people in their boat now so they can escape this noise. Some understanding goes a long way. And I know that I will be more understanding now on also. So there's my PSA. Thank you for coming to my TED talk. Please don't hurt the people that have generators. Good morning. Good morning, kind of. What have we found today? We really want to get our washing machine moved into the hobbit hole in here. We've got this perfect spot for it. And while we were swimming the other day, we noticed a small through hole coming out somewhere around here. Uh, we're, there's so many through holes on the bottom of the boat that it never stood out to us before. And I'm like, it's got to be under this pedestal where you know we're trying to put the washer. So I got this piece of floor apart and slid it back and there's the through hole wide open there's nothing on it there's no valve nothing and as i was getting in here you know i'm like man it's just so wet around here everything kind of feels moist we pulled this piece of floor off and it was you know there was water all underneath that I discovered some moisture in the closet the other day after we had some big waves dump over the top of the boat and just some rough sailing upwind to Martinique. But man, like a ton of water has got to be coming in this. And then if it comes in there, it's going to go straight back this way and either sit back in this corner or find its way out underneath this floor. I am just baffled. Why on earth? It can't be stock because they sure wouldn't surely wouldn't let it go from the factory with nothing to keep water from shooting up inside there it just makes no sense but then they went ahead and put this floor over top of it and, and nailed it all in finished like it wasn't meant to be removable yeah i'm i'm, I'm just flummoxed good side is we got a through hole that's going to be our drain for our washer i've just got to figure out how to how to plumb it see if i've got a, a handle i can put on there uh, for, like for a, an actual through haul handle just so crazy though that that's how that's been left all this time like you're not going to hit waves and push water up through that hole upside we have a through haul for our drain so then what i'm going to do is i'm going to make this cut a little bigger and then i can stick this thing in this hole easier if it's too small it's hard to stick it in there All right, well, things are coming along pretty well. I went and bought some more flexible high pressure tubing. So I need to be able to go around some sort of tight corners. I've got my plumbing almost ready. This is our water supply line coming underneath this little closet here. And then this is our drain hose, which goes straight out into the through hall. So we'll go ahead and kind of get everything back together first. Uh, get the machine in place and then I'll cut that piece to fit to be just the right length. And then I think we'll be ready. We got electric already. All we gotta do is hook it up, wash some clothes. Now we've got it where it needs to be. We just don't have water to it. Yeah, I haven't. Uh, it's run. We have the whole hose run. I just haven't tied it in over there yet. Okay. Here we are sitting in Grenada. And man, if this isn't the spot for wing boiling. It's like everybody's out today. Eric's out trying to show up all these little kids that also have wing boils. They're pretty good. The wing foiling is definitely a way more accessible sport on the sailboat. You know, for a long time everybody kind of had 
the kite surfing stuff. You know, you just blow it up and, and then you can go out. You don't have to... It takes a while to get good at it, but once you're good at it, it's not... It doesn't get any harder to get off of, off the boat and do. So, obviously, we've been having a lot of fun doing that. Maybe eventually I'll, I'll get out there. We'll see. But we've just been really busy, actually, here with river stuff he's got soccer on tuesday wednesday thursday he's got chess club on tuesdays and thursdays he tried art club but it wasn't really his thing he did debate team or club or something oh, let's see they're gonna run into a boat can he get up wind uh, just around it <laughs> Yeah, so we've been having fun. Hopefully uh, this week we'll actually show you some of those those activities that we've been doing. If you've been following along, you know that since the moment we bought this boat, it's been a challenge. We took her all the way to the U.S. and had our hands full with expected projects and unexpected ones. Without buddy boats around, that meant we were without friends, and especially without kid friends, for far too long. I'm going to soccer with Julian. I'm running to his boat to pick him up. Julian, you ready? Yeah. Along with the safety from hurricanes, this was the biggest reason for our laser focus on getting back to Grenada. We knew the amazing community and friendships that awaited us here, both among locals and among boats. And there's no way to express what a difference it's made in our lives and especially in rivers. Whoa! Exactly when we all needed it the most. Afternoon guys, how you doing? It's just being here and it's here. <laughs> so like being football dad. Um, what that feels like. Like football experience. <laughs> I know. Through uh, soccer parents. Soccer <laughs> parents. <laughs> for another edition of Lauren Runs in Exotic Places. Today, I'm going for a 5K run. It's organized, I'm not just doing it by myself. <laughs> and it's gonna be in Woburn, which is just right here in the bay. So we figured, why not? It was 50 EC to enter, which is like 20 bucks. We'll see what happens. I'll go see uh, some other parts of the island that I've never seen. Starts at eight o'clock, so hopefully it doesn't get too hot. You look ready to me. Do to add? I'm ready to drop you off. Yeah! Do my part! It starts in that little area kind of over there, and then it goes up this hill, and then it goes around and ends right there. Let's go see! No 5k for you. He's gonna run anyway. Dude, did you catch up to her? Did you? I was afraid you were just gonna keep going. I'm like, I started running. I'm glad, I'm glad you came back. Why don't you and I go 
go home and have some breakfast, and then we'll come pick her up. All right, me and you will do it next time, too, I think. I'm kind of sad we're not, but... Rivers inserted himself. It's Tuesday. You know what that means? Brewery. Adventure day. And brewery. So today we are adventuring to the brewery because they have two EC uh, beer. One beer is two EC, which and is like burgers. 50 cents or something crazy. We are not in the right bay for that though. It is over at Prickly Bay and we are in Woburn. So we are going to take our dinghy all the way out and around and then back over to a different bay. And then we're gonna take a long walk up and over a hill. And uh, we'll definitely be needing the beers by the time we oh, get I there. We've got some buddy boats that are going also. So it looks like they're in their dinghy and we gotta go too. All right, go jump in the dinghy. I know. Get in. Jump. Careful. The West Indies Brewing Company was one of our favorite hangouts back in 2020 when we were here during the height of COVID around the world. This year, none of us really wanted to up anchor from our cozy spots in Woburn Bay. But a pack of cheap sailors will walk a really long way for 74 cent beers. That's the honey lemon, that's way better than this one. This is the 2EC humdinger. Yeah. It's got a mild soapy quality to it. Yeah. Show me how full it is. Ah! Whoa, whoa. That's how many inches of rainfall we got. <laughs> a lot. Is it the best? Yeah. A lot of rain songs. Has anybody written Grenada Rain? You. Tasty Grenada Rain. Filled up our whole bucket. And now it's like. Right, nice. 